As you can see, I am not in my normal studio setup, but don't worry, I'll be back to that in my next video. In the meantime, AMD is working hard on their RX 10,000 GPUs, so we find out something new. But before I get to that, Amazon's Prime Day brings some amazing deals, and AMD's new GPU and CPUs are a huge performance jump. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, while Amazon's Prime Day event doesn't technically start until July 8th, they already have some amazing early deals. And because of that, Newegg has also launched their Summer Bonanza, and with that brings even more deals. So I thought I'd kind of quickly go over some of my favorite PC hardware deals, starting with the Ryzen 5 9600X. And here, as you can see, it is currently on sale, $100 off, bringing it down to $179.99. But that actually isn't all, because it also has a free SSD with your purchase. You can actually buy this for the same price on Amazon, but it doesn't come with that SSD. Moving on, we have the 9800X 3D, and this one is technically just a few dollars lower than MSRP, but you're getting one of, well, pretty much the best gaming CPU out there, and it also comes with a free SSD. Next is Samsung's 990 Pro. This is their Gen 4 SSD, blazing fast internal storage, and yeah, M.2 drive, obviously, like I said, blazing fast, and it's just 150 bucks. But if you need a bit more storage, Seagate's 24 terabyte hard drive is now just $250. So, that one is also a fantastic deal. Now, with the fact that GPUs are pulling so much wattage lately, I thought I'd give you a fairly decent fully modular power supply. Actually, this is a really great one. Corsair makes some of the best power supplies out there. This one is brought down to just $120. Definitely a fantastic deal. Finally, we have... Well, Really quickly, I just want to say, you know, I almost want to have a funeral for one of my absolute favorite mice out there, the G604. It's a wireless gaming mouse that unfortunately Logitech quit making. So the next best thing is the Logitech G305. This has really high DPI as well as one millisecond report rate, but a 250 hour battery life and right now it's 35 percent off leading it just to 32.49 if you like this deal or any of the other ones i will have affiliate links to these down in the description below they don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out and next up for today amd recently announced both the radeon ai pro r 9700 as well as the threadripper 9000 series processors but they didn't really give us too much information about either of those luckily they have now sent that off and starting things off with the 9700 so we kind of already knew this part it's 32 gigabytes gddr6 very interesting boost in performance, but when we actually go and we compare it to their last gen W7800, I'm assuming they didn't compare it to the 7900 just because that one probably isn't in the same price bracket. But when compared to the 7800, you can see that for one, FB32 teraflops got a slight bump, barely any at all. Of course, we know with RDNA 4, they don't even need as many compute units to still get right around that same performance. But the interesting thing here is the fact that it now has FP8 matrix operations and you can see that the w7800 flat did not support that it's definitely one of the big things with their new gpus but the 9700 gets a whopping 382.7 teraflops then you have int 8 that is obviously huge then n4 basically they're claiming 4x performance jump here now obviously the fp8 here it wasn't able to do it at all now it is and then you have four times here now moving over to threadripper 
Starting things off, you can see with the Threadripper Pro series, these CPUs are very similar to last gen as far as specs. So we're talking, they the Pro series goes up to 96 cores with the 9995WX, the naming's getting a little wild over here, then move down, so we're talking 96 all the way down to 12 cores. And once again, that is specifically their Threadripper Pro lineup, but they also, just like last time, brought back regular Threadripper for high-end desktop. And apparently it sold well enough with the 7000 series. If you remember, they actually took it away for a little while. It was just Threadripper Pro. But then with the 7000 series, they brought it back with two different lineups. Either way, the Threadripper 9000 HEDT, and just like before, this one gets up to 64 cores and 128 threads. But unlike before, like I had mentioned, there is a very nice performance boost. As you can see here, this is the 96 core comparing Zen 4 to Zen 5, and this is specifically an IPC uplift, meaning fixed frequencies, and yet Zen 5 got a 16% boost here, and then in spec workstation, it got a whopping 25% boost. And we also kind of see that moving forward with actual real world performance. Obviously there isn't really much of a clock increase or anything like that. So it's pretty much all from IPC. And you can see that it actually gets up to 26% higher generational performance compared to, so this is the new Threadripper Pro 9995WX versus the 7995WX. And yeah, I mean, a lot of these get some very nice performance boosts. So obviously the specs can be a little bit misleading just because this new Zen 5 generation has a very nice IPC increase. Now, unfortunately, I will go and say that the non-pro Threadripper didn't really have too much information as far as performance, at least compared to last gen. I really like this because it shows us what kind of actual generational performance that we have, but it doesn't really have it for the non-pro variant compared to last gen. It does have it compared to some of Intel's CPUs, but at this point with Threadripper, it essentially has like zero competition, at least if you ask me. Depending on the workload, there are some caveats to it, but for the most part, AMD's Threadripper really just kind of has no competition. And lastly for today, if you remember, AMD's next-gen GPUs are set to be uDNA, which actually combines their RDNA and cDNA class GPUs, which is pretty wild because before RDNA and cDNA, they actually already had a more of a general purpose GPU architecture. They said it would be better by splitting them up. Now they're combining them again. Now I have gone over some of the reasons that may be, as well as the fact that next gen is definitely looking very nice. Also, if I'm getting a little sweaty, please bear with me. I apologize. I actually had to turn off the AC because it was really loud. So it's getting pretty hot in here. Either way, uDNA, like I said, definitely looking nice. This is probably going to be their RX 10,000 series of GPUs. I, I really don't know. I don't know if they're actually going to go that far. Maybe they'll completely change the naming scheme. Hopefully nothing like RX AI or anything like that. But regardless, we are looking at uDNA and it looks like AMD is already kind of including it in code. Obviously, this means they're gearing up, they're preparing the GPUs for release, not necessarily release. I mean, they aren't coming that soon, almost certainly next year, sometime next year. But regardless, we are getting some information from it. And as you can see, this actually originally comes from the GFX display engine. And this was leaked by Kepler, where he states that HDMI 2.2 is coming to these GPUs. We're talking 64 gig as well as 80 gig. Now, they state that uh, I thought next gen HDMI should have up to 96. He says yes, but it seems AMD will only support up to 80 gigabits per second with GFX 13. Now, that may not sound like much. I mean, you know, you may be disappointed in that, but don't forget that 80 gigabits per second is enough for something like 4K 240 hertz. So I doubt anyone would really be going over that anytime soon. Plus, let's not forget that monitor makers are kind of terrible at adopting uh, new HDMI, especially, but pretty much new generations of any kind of connector. But regardless, this is coming and it definitely shows that AMD is not playing around with their next generation GPUs. Clearly, you know, they 
are likely planning something pretty big because why would you even need HDMI 2.2 if your GPU can't push anywhere near the amount of information to use it? So while that does it for today, I do apologize that I'm like all hunched over, I'm trying to stay close to the mic, but don't worry, I will be back to my normal studio, like I said, in the next video, but in the meantime, what do you think about AMD's next gen? Do you think this is a good sign for having more high-end GPUs? And how powerful do you think their RX 10,000 cards will be? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.